Hello, my name's Steve. Today I'm going to show you how to fix a leaking tap. So, in today's video, we're going to take out these uh, gland bodies and replace them with uh, new tap glands. That'll prevent this tap from dripping and it'll also make uh, the day to day operation of the taps easier. At the minute, they've got a compression gland inside which relies on a rubber washer. As you tighten the tap up, that compresses inside and prevents the water from running. Uh, the difference with ceramic glands is they don't have that washer so these should last a lot longer and also they're easier to use so if you're replacing them for someone that struggles with the hands um, then these are ideal because they're really easy to operate. So hope you like the video. Okay so what you're going to need is new tap glands a 17mm spanner, selection of screwdrivers, a couple of shifters, kitchen roll or paper towel in case it all goes pear shaped, and this little device that I've got available from Screwfix, I'll put a link below, um, is actually a measurer. So this tells you uh, what size tap plunge you need. Uh, the how many splines are on the tap gland and also the height so uh, with this you can you can take the top of the tap off without turning the water off you can measure it get the right parts before you start so that's really important the other option is to get a couple of different tap bodies and uh, hope you've got the right one so first things first we need to find the water supply so in most UK houses that is directly under the kitchen sink or behind the washing machine. So I'm just going to show you how to turn that off now. Okay, before we turn the water off downstairs, what we've got to do first is isolate this combi boiler. So really simple. What we've got to do is find the power supply, turn that off. That's the boiler isolated. That means we can't damage the boiler if we drain any water out of it. So next job downstairs to isolate the water. Okay, so this is under the uh, sink and under the cupboard so what we've got is this is the main incoming supply the main stop tap goes through the water meter past another isolator and then round and feeds all the house feeds the taps so in this instance what we're going to actually do is turn the water supply off here so you could turn it off here so if you turn it off here you turn it off before the meter it's no different just that this valve is a lot easier to operate than this tap. And you can see this white around this tap, that signals that at some point that's been leaking. So we're going to leave that as it is, so we don't prevent, so we don't cause any further leaks. And uh, like I say, we've isolated it here. So now we're just going to run the tap and see if that's isolated. Okay, so that's the water off. So when we turn these taps on, you can see there's no water. So that would be a mistake now for you to think, oh, right, I can take these tap bodies off. In actual fact, we've still got water that's in these pipes that goes upstairs, and that's held at the minute by a vacuum. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to nip upstairs, open the taps, and then we'll see if any water runs out of these. So that's the taps now open upstairs. And what we've got now is this water is now coming out of the pipes. So if we'd have just left it before and hadn't opened the taps upstairs, when we take the tap bodies out, all this volume of water would then be coming out of where the tap bodies sit. So while this is draining, what we're going to do is take these caps off. Now they're just um, on clips. Some taps are stiff and others sometimes you might need to get a screwdriver or uh, something sharp and put in. So the next thing we're going to do is take these uh, covers off. So they're normally just a Phillips screwdriver. So they will just slide off. And now you can see the uh, tap gland there. And take that out. So as you can see the water's just draining, so we've just got to wait for that to stop. So while we're waiting, this is the device that I was on about. So it tells you the thread size, the number of teeth on the spline, 
and the length of the spline. So it's important that you get them the same. So, so obviously I've already measured. We've got a 20, a 20 tooth spline. And then if you get this, get this and put, put on the actual tap body, you can see what's the right measurement. So that's an eight mil. So these are exactly the same. These are an eight mil. Well, we'll be able to take the screw out first. So, yeah, as I was saying, these that's an eight mil up, and then you just check the spline size is the same. So the spline sits just inside there in them in that toothed area. So it's important that you get that right, otherwise your uh, cover won't fit. So yeah, the kitchen roll ready just in case we've got any water. I doubt we will. So they're nice and easy. Now sometimes these can be really stiff. So if they are stiff, what you can do, you can put the spanner on, you can get a get a hammer and tap that, and by tapping it, you sort of shock it and just free off uh, any debris that's in there that can build up over time. So we take these out. That's that little bit of water that was on them out. Well, there shouldn't be too much. He says. So Let's get rid of this water out of here. And the reason I'm cleaning this water off is so that we don't end up with any water going under the tap and into the cupboard below. Now it should be sufficiently sealed, however, that is not always the case. So, tap bodies. We've got a hot and a cold. They're exactly the same. It doesn't really matter which you put in where. If you was to put the cold in the hot and the hot in the cold, make no difference. They're just a colour coding. So what we're going to do is drop that in. Hand tight. Put the hot one in. That's just the water that's there. Don't worry about that. So we're just tying them up by hand. Now, obviously this is the old tap body. But what you can see is they've got a rubber seal. So it's really important that you don't over tighten that rubber seal. So all you need to do is get your spanner on, just gently tighten it until you feel it getting tight. And once it starts to get tight, just give it a little tweak and that's it. No need to put excessive force on it, otherwise all you'll do is distort, distort the rubber and you'll end up with a leak. So as soon as it's tight, just a little bit more, you can feel it. You can feel when it's tight enough, you don't need to go more than that. So what we're going to do now is just give it a quick dry. And the reason we're drying it is so that when we turn the water on, we'll be able to see, let's get that there. We'll be able to see if there is any leaks and if we need to nip them up anymore. So the taps upstairs are open. So what we're going to do, we're just going to place these on so we've got some leverage. Make sure they're shut. Oh, God, I've left that out now. There you go. Right, so what I'm going to do now, get this rubbish out of the sink. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the water on very slowly and the taps upstairs are fully open so what's going to happen is the water is going to come up it's going to come up through the pipes upstairs and what that will do is push any air out of the pipe work so I'm just going to turn it on really low when I hear the taps running upstairs I can go and turn them off so 
So it's really important at this point that you listen to the water that's in the pipe. So if you just turn it on very slightly, you'll be able to hear the water running. Now don't go and turn it on full in case you've got any leaks. If these tap bodies weren't on properly and so you've got water then coming through, then what we don't want to do is turn the, turn the water on full, end up with a lot of pressure and end up with a big leak. So what I'm going to do now is go and turn the taps off upstairs and then I can turn the boiler back on. Okay, so this is the cold tap that I was talking about. So obviously that's the water that's coming up from downstairs. So we can turn that off. And now as you can see, the hot tap started. So what's happening is it's going through the boiler, coming back, forcing the air out of the, out of the hot taps. And that's what you've just seen there is now the water's running. So we know there's not much air in the system, if any. So we can now turn that off. Okay, so here we are back at the boiler. So we're going to go back down to the fuse spur, turn that on. That's now the boiler up and running. Okay, so these taps are looking good now. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the cold supply on full now. So this is the tap that we said before. So we turn that all the way around so that's fully on. Now to check these taps, what we're going to do is just going to turn one on at a time. Now these new tap bodies are ceramic tap bodies, so they're only a quarter of a turn. So as you can see that's working fine. So we'll just check the cold tap. Again that's working fine. So now we've just got to put the taps back together. Okay so just a final check, we'll just pull these off. That's all nice and dry. So we'll just push these back on now. They can be a bit of a tight fit. That's those on. Obviously make sure you get the hot and the cold the right way around. Again, this is just the reverse process. So put the caps on, hold the thing, turn it up. Same on this side. Just move that out of the way. Hold that so you don't turn it on. Pop the caps in. And that is your tap finished. Okay, so that's the tap all finished. So I've talked you through isolating the water supply, which is probably the most important thing. So always isolate the water uh, or the tap itself sometimes they have isolators underneath it you can just get a flat bladed screwdriver put in the isolator turn it and then that will isolate the individual tap that process is a lot easier um, so as you can see really simple uh, didn't take very long at all anyone that's half decent at DIY can do this if you've not got a 17 mil spanner uh, then you can use things like adjustables uh, but for me personally, I prefer to use a spanner if you can do it. It gives you a lot more grip on the on the taps. And sometimes if they're stiff, um, you can really do with that. Worst case scenario, you can actually use a deep socket set to take the tap guns out. But, um, you know, that's a personal preference. So I hope you like the video. Uh, please like and subscribe my channel. I'm going to be releasing a lot more how-to videos. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.